effects of the boiler, we consider this model. We have a great area here. Over this, we have coal. From this side, we are firing the coal. From this side, this side we fire the air. So we have supplied the coal here. The coal that we are supplied may contain moisture, contain the ash also. So whatever the coal we are supplying may consist of moisture or may consist of ash also. Ash will not participate in combustion. Neither the mass of moisture will get combustion. Only the dry coal will be get burned. So what is the mass of dry coal? Mass of coal multiplied by 1 minus percentage of moisture into 1 minus percentage of ash that is called as dry coal. So if the CV is the calorific value of the coal, the only heat input to this system is Q in is mass of dry coal multiplied by calorific value that is equation number one. In the heat balance we have to find out how this heat has been utilized for various purposes. The very first thing is that some of the heat is it carried by us water. So some of the heat will be carried by water. So H1 is an enthalpy at inlet, H2 is an enthalpy at outlet and M dot S is the mass of steam. So we can find out that part of this heat, part of this quantity is gained by steam. So right, heat gain Q gain by steam equals to mass of steam multiplied by H2 minus H1. How to calculate H2H1? We have seen just now. The air is consist of oxygen 23% and nitrogen that is a dry air. This excess air can be supplied sometimes as in addition to what? Whatever the coal required that we have just seen. C plus O2 equal to CO2 and we got some 15.3. If you want to supply more air, we can supply more air also. So coal is coming from this side, the coal has two constituents, one is carbon and one is hydrogen. Carbon will burn with oxygen will produce CO2. Hydrogen will burn with, uh, hydrogen also burn with oxygen will produce water vapor. Plus nitrogen will not take part inside this one, so N2. And if you fire excess air, then O2 may be present here. And if you fire less air, then instead of O2, carbon monoxide is present. For higher quantity, O2 is present. For lower quantity, CO is present. And if we have exact air, then only CO2, N2 and H2 are produced. That is exact quantity. If we supply excess, excess oxygen is produced. If we supply less, carbon monoxide is present, oxygen will not be present. So all these constituents are called as flue gas. If you subtract the mass of hydrogen from this one, it is called as mass of dry flue gas. So mass of dry flue Q, heat carried by flue gases. If the your coal does not contain moisture, there is no question of H2 produce. It is pure carbon, carbon dioxide. Q of fly dry gas multiplied by Cp of dry gas multiplied by Tg. What is Tg? The temperature of flue gas minus Tr. Tr is what? Room temperature and Tg is called as flue gas temperature. So you can calculate that this quantity has first some of this part is gone to this sum of this part has gone to flue gas. If you are able to calculate mass of water form, then you can say the Q, the heat carried by steam also, in flue gas, not by this steam. So I will modify this. I will call this one is H2O. H2O in steam is equal to mass of steam form multiplied by enthalpy difference of this point of steam minus this value. 
So you need to calculate delta x. So these are the quantities. This is in. This one is out. This one is also out. This one is also out. And there are certain losses which we can't account. They are called as heat transfer losses. Heat is either transferred by means of radiation or by means of convection. So we have the heat transfer losses. This you can calculate one minus rest of all quantity. That is simple basic. We are not considered too much details of this one. The numerical they will give you that there is a CV of unburned fuel. This one is burned. This one is unburned. Then you can also calculate what is a Q for unburned. Unburned is mass of unburned fuel multiplied by calorific value of unburned fuel. Here unburned is basically ash. Ash will not participate in it. So basically it's a mass of ash. So this one is my equation number 5 now. So I have to add one more quantity right now. That is my second heat balance sheet. If you divide all quantity by mass of coal, so this is get cancelled. And then this value divided by what? Mass of coal. Divided by what? Mass of coal. This is mass of coal. Mass of coal. Your heat balance sheet is prepared per kg of coal fire. That is another way. What is the mass of steam generated? 550. What is the dryness fraction? 0.95. At what pressure steam is produced? 10 bar. Coal use is what? 70. What is the calorific value of coal? 33,000. How much is moisture? 2.5. And what is the mass of dry flue gas that is given to you? 8.5. What is the temperature of flue gas? 350. What is the temperature of boiler room? 30. What is the feed water temperature? 40. What is the specific heat? 1.005. Draw the heat balance sheet for the boiler. First of all, I will calculate H1 and H2. So H2 is HF plus X HFG at what pressure? 10 bar. How much is? Similarly, calculate H1. H1 is given by HF. HF at feed water temperature. Is the feed water temperature is same as 30? Or 40 is given as 40. Two point five percent is it two point five percent is point zero two five. Two point five percent of mass is it point zero two five? Point zero two five. Two. Now I have to find out where this heat is utilized. First is utilized in converting of the steam. So right, heat utilized. I have to use mass of steam divided by mass of coal because our calculation is per coal quantity H2 minus H1. Mass of coal is 550. Mass of coal is 70. H2, we are just find out 2675. 167.5. This one is also kilojoules per kg. Next, we will find out how much uh, coal is formed, drive gas is formed. 8.5 per kg of coal. So, right, divide. The quantity was given as what? Kg per kg of coal. So, this one is m dot dg divided by m dot coal multiplied by cp of dry gas multiplied by temperature of flue gas minus room temperature this total quantity was given as 8.5 cp of gas is as good as air is 1.005 gas temperature is flue gas temperature is 350 and the room temperature is 30. Next we have a formation of steam also because the fuel contains what? Moisture. 
and what is the percentage of moisture is 2.5 2.5 is it a percentage by mass means per kg of coal so this is it carried flue gas different and this team is different this is form in the flue gas is mass of divided by mass of coal multiplied by enthalpy of steam now steam is it in in with steam is it a homogeneous with flue gas so is at the same pressure at which the flue gas will come and at same temperature at which the flue gas will come so what is the temperature of this one is same as the flue gas temperature that is 350 and what is the pressure of the flue gas is equals to what 1 bar flue gas is formed at 1 bar minus when you supply the coal is the coal is supplied at room temperature when the coal was supplied the moisture is present in coal and is the coal is supplied at room temperature so is it HF at room temperature M dot H2 divided this one is 2.5%, 2.5% is 0.025. 1 bar and 350. Is it available? Now this alternate procedure, if the value is not available in data book, use this. Minus. What is HF at room temperature? What is HF room temperature? Is 30. So at 30 degrees Celsius, what is the value of HF? 120. Take this equation number 2. Make this equation number 3, make this equation number 4, I think we have almost used all data. So what is the last part, it unaccounted it. Convection, radiation plus 3 plus 4, 9659 kilojoules per kg. We have only one entry on credit side, that is the heat supplied. What is the heat supplied for us? Heat supplied is this quantity. Is uh, quantity how much? 3, 2. This one is last one is for total. Only one entry, so 3, 2, 1, 7, 5. For debit side, serial number 1 is heat utilized in steam, is 197. Second one, heat carried by dry flow gas. How much is this quantity? 2733. Third atom. Heat carried by steam 76.24. And number 4 is unaccounted is 96. And finally, we have total. So, naturally, this calculation is done based on this one. So, is 32175.